Удобнее, может, не Извините, за вас можно куда-нибудь Товарищи зрители, можно попросить кого-то перебиться, чтобы молодой человек мог добраться до места хоть какого? Да, он может это добраться. Спасибо. Вот one of you here for yet another literary night. Um, so uh, I will kind of ask to please silence your phones. Um, taking videos and pictures is totally fine. 
We're also live streaming on our YouTube channel. So it's already available for you. And so please share with your friends. Like it, with a comment on it, help other people to see it. We do have questions. Please make them ready. Uh, we will have a dedicated Q&A time after the uh, main talk. Uh, don't forget to raise your hands, Brian. And uh, for those who uh, who is watching us, you can always submit a question on the live stream. Uh, we have a number of copies of the Disney book available, so please feel free to sign it with our authors and translators tonight. While uh, um, getting ready for this event, I was uh, thinking that I should stop with a disclaimer of some sort, because uh, without that, there will be people who will uh, find uh, anything with uh, supporting um, inappropriate today. But April is a poetry month and tonight is a poetry night. So we will listen and hear authors in uh, Russia, poets of diaspora elsewhere, Ukrainian poets who choose to write, uh, write in Russian. Their poetry is full of horror, grief, and deep sense of personal responsibility for the outrage that is um, happening in Ukraine <coughs> today. Um, yeah, the disbelief book that consists of 100 poems of about 70 various writers started as a Kabilka project, the piggy bank. Uh, Julia Nimirovska, the editor of the book, and the initiator of the project started it as a safe online repository for the poetry as way far um, Putin's reach. So this ontology, ontology is not always remarkable for their quality of their translations. The marvelous team of the translators include such big names as uh, Maria Blushstein, Richard Coombs, uh, Anna Korshulnitska, Dmitry Manin, and Andy Burago, who is here with us tonight, together with Paulina, who represents poets of this book. I'll just, I'll introduce them just in a moment. Uh, their smokestack books deserve our gratitude, not only for publishing this anthology, but also for publishing Russia's Burning Anthology which is the collection of Russian uh, poetry of the Second World War that came out in 2020. I personally think that the cover of this book done by Maria Kazanskaya is also a very powerful contribution to this anthology. Thank you. Um, I wouldn't say anything new, trauma and uh, dramatic events can make some people mute, physically speechless. But there is also a category of people who choose to write and speak about their experiences. And this is how and why I found this book important, because I hope that it will help other people, just like it helped me, to process my emotions while reading it. And I've said, let me introduce our guest tonight. Please welcome Anna Krushelnitska. The Sakhalin Island born, Chita City raised. She is a poet, a translator. She published several important works on Stanley, the language and uh, how events influence people in both countries during the Cold War in both countries of um, uh, states and uh, Soviet Union. Palina Barskova, an old friend of Globus, it doesn't really need any introduction, but nevertheless, a poet, a writer, and a Berkeley professor. Please welcome Polina. Dmitry Manin here, who is a physicist, a um, programmer, and uh, the most titled translator with us here tonight. Uh, he's Moscow born and uh, resides in California. And Andrea Kuraka, please welcome. Andre is Leningrad, born and raised who immigrated in 1991. And when he's not busy with his tech work, he translates poetry, 
creates board <coughs> games and teaches computer science to the school kids. With that, maybe we can start with uh, Paulina and Anna. Paulina and Anna telling us a little bit more about how they found themselves in this project and what do they overall think about this avalanche of uh, uh, Russian anti war poetry that we're observing nowadays. Thank you. Okay. Um, hello, everybody. Good evening. Um, to address the questions in succession, how did I find myself affiliated with this project? Was one of yeah, the questions. Yeah, what made you right? take? Um, I was friends with translators, um, and I was friends with them on Facebook, on social media, which the only the only kind of social media I use is Facebook. Um, and we were working like with Mita. We were working on other projects, other things that were not war related at all before the war. Obviously, there was no war. Um, it's kind of hard to trace one's involvement back to the original point. You are, you know, in a group of like minded people who are all affected by, by this war uh, emotionally. Um, I'll be maybe not all physically and you're all stunned and you're all sitting there trying to try trying to try I, it's not knowing what to do um, and then because you are in the same harass in the same bubble you you'd see a lot of poetry being written and being posted because that's how that's generally how modern um, poetry in Russia functions uh, for the most part. People do not save it for a collection that they're going to publish one day. They generate it and they post it. Um, and so you see all this poetry and, and the things that you have been translating before, the things that you were working on make no sense any longer because this war has shattered the previous complex world where things that you thought mattered matter and you just apply yourself to translate this war poetry because this is pretty much the only thing you can work on at least that's how it goes to me and i think me to share that a little bit as well no I, I i don't know if i can add anything to to sir yeah it's basically exactly the same yes because I think that's that's how we found ourselves translating more poetry, and we knew Yulia, and Yulia knew Andre, and we didn't know him, and well, I didn't. Um, and so we got involved with this Kapilka project, and we the first thing we did we just pulled poems that spoke to us and translated them and put them back. And this was like the only intellectual work that we were able to do for the first I was for the first maybe two, three months um, of the war. And so this disbelief um, anthology sort of came from the original, from the first batch of war poetry that came out. And it's been steadily appearing since. And, you know, for, for the duration of the war, people have been writing about the war. And we could make, with the stuff that we have, uh, with the poetry that we have access to and, and the poetry we translate, we could probably put out four more um, at this point. But you know, there's a there's a gap between the conception of the book and the actual um, publication. And so, this belief mostly contains war poetry written in the first, I'm going to say, three months of the war. And more work is forthcoming. And I always take too long to speak. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and I forgot all the other questions. I don't know, maybe Polina would like to say how she became involved with the book, because it's a whole different entry, right? I was involved, as I suspect, uh, most of the authors of this book. I was invited. Um, I uh, think uh, Mitya just read one of the texts on Facebook, which is indeed curiously 
uh, one of the main pastures where mm -hmm. Russian poetry exists today. Um, since uh, there are people in this audience who also uh, visit this forum frequently, regularly, and also there are people in the audience who I suspect are not so aware of this phenomenon. Uh, and, and I think the phenomenon is rather striking that uh, right from the beginning, from the February of the last year, there has been kind of this unbelievable rise of poetic activity, if you wish. Uh, one of the main responses of the emotional responses of the, I don't know, intellectual, cultural responses that people who exist in Russian uh, give to this event and share with each other. Um, and uh, I, I can say a couple of things now, but maybe then your questions will help us uh, to think through some of these things, to describe some of these things um, already, since this is how a uh, network of good producers uh, exists. There are articles, there are studies, there are all kinds of publications. As Anna said, there are various anthologies uh, published not only abroad, but curiously, there is an anthology that came out uh, in Petersburg called, I think, Stichy Последнего Времени, Ivan Limbach Press, Irina Kravtsova. Uh, with Yuri Levin, uh, put this book out to their own risk, which is obvious. Also, there are remarkable anthologies coming out of Tel Aviv. Uh, and what we can see there, yes, as I said, that the reaction, the outpour is massive. Uh, also, what I think is very curious is the diversity, uh, not of, well, obviously diversity of quality, which is a very difficult thing to speak about, but curious, right? Something that is so urgent and something that is so absolutely of raw emotion. How do we judge its quality? I think this is an interesting question also opposed to the translators and to the collectors of these anthologies. And various collectors, editors of the anthologies give different answers in their introductions. Uh, it's also a big discussion. But one of the most curious things that um, I see uh, there is that people of very different stylistic, aesthetic allegiances speak. And uh, something interesting, some kind of apprachement happening between totally avant-garde writers, people of difficult poetry, of strange poetry, of language poetry, and on the other hand, people of popular poetry. Uh, and suddenly bridging is happening, new dialogues is happening. And uh, as Nastya, our beloved host said, um, that uh, usually, right, what is the cliche? The cliche is forever to repeat Adorno and to abuse Adorno that there is no poetry after Auschwitz. Of course, obviously, there is nothing but poetry after Auschwitz, Leningrad, and Butcher. Uh, but there is this phenomenon of silence that on the one hand, you cannot speak about it. On the other hand, you cannot shut up about it. There is this amazing emergence of language. And I think this is what we're dealing with. This is, I guess, the first tentative answer. Mm -hmm. So to maybe add a little bit to what I mean, Padina said, um, I am not a poet. And to me, poetry, um, 
I, I, I started reading poetry fairly late in life, and it was mostly an intellectual joy for me. What you can do with the language. That's fascinating. At some point, I started translating poetry, Russian poetry, into English, and they translated poetry that, that spoke to me in that way, poetry that does funny things with language. And so it's hard, it's hard to translate. So it's an intellectual challenge that stimulates me. That's, that's how it was going. And then this happened, and everything I was doing, uh, as I said, lost any meaning. And I felt a strange feeling of muteness. Um, you're not mute when you can't say something. You're mute when you want to say something and can't say it, right? Um, and at the same time, this flurry, this flood, this fire hose of poetry. You're a poet. <laughs> <laughs> started <laughs> um, on on Facebook, and that those, a lot of that was precisely the words that I would want to say, but I just didn't have them. So, of course, what do I do as a translator on my, on my, in, in, in my rut, uh, taking things in Russian and putting them in English, I start translating them. And uh, Yulia Nemirovska, who should be given a lot of credit for uh, this and a lot of other things, Just happened to, um, she is a poet and she started collecting all that stuff and asked for my help. And of course, um, it's, it just happened that along with the, the stash of uh, texts in Russian, um, work began almost all by itself. Um, of translating it into English and, and in some other languages. There are some translations in other languages, but unfortunately none of the translators kind of uh, attached themselves to this project as, as, as um, the five of us did. So that's how it happened. Uh, and we are very lucky, and again, a lot of credit should be given to Andy Croft, who immediately responded to a sample that we sent them and put out the book incredibly fast. Yeah, with wartime urgency. Yeah. So here we are. Thank you, Dmitry. What about you, Andrei? Okay, sure. I just, just, I just started feeling guilty, and now everybody is taking part. I'm just sitting there enjoying. It. <laughs> uh, so I think there's not much to add to all of this. Uh, maybe just a couple of fine details. First of all, I just feel it's it's a completely natural emotion to like to want to share what you just like read on Facebook, maybe, and I mean, uh, and and then you realize, I mean, none of my friends are like. Uh, Russian speaking, and I mean, I've lived here for quite some time. So, so it's like, yeah, how do you talk to uh, to English speakers about all this? How do you? So, I kind of, you know, this this book. I sometimes I feel it like it should be, uh, it could be used as your like, uh, I don't know, a, um, uh, a phrase book sorts, right? You go to someone. <laughs> And I mean, if if you want to express something, if you you just find the you know the corresponding uh, pieces and kind of you know, uh, and you can share your like um, what you just because this this is how at least I sometimes talk with my friends. They're like you know, uh, like a friend would come over and say, "Did you did you just read this 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 like uh, this 
piece of poetry that was published yesterday or something like that. And I would say, yeah, I did that. It reminds me of that. And this, this sort of kind of dialogue happens, but it's harder to have the same dialogue with a, with a Russian speaking, uh, I mean, with an English speaking person. And this kind of enables you maybe a little bit. Um, so, yeah. And I also, I also think of this in like in very practical terms, because I think with like with this kind of book and with like powerful poetry out there, uh, English speaking world, and I mean, it's like not just United States or like I mean, the UK, but also like whole Europe. I mean, everybody speaks English. I think uh, they they have access to like to all this. Yeah. Uh, and and that uh, I mean it's it's kind of like an educational project of sorts. I'd say it's it's cultural brokerage. When somebody comes to you who is you know a U.S. person, not a lot of awareness um, of Russian stuff, and they say, "So is that true that all Russians do the last one support this war and the government and Putin?" And you say, "Well, no," and this can be submitted as evidence. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? With this, we are explaining ourselves to the world a little bit. Thank you. Um, I have a technical question, because I noticed that some of the poetry is translated together with the author, like uh, Andrea, you've done. And most of the poetry is, of course, translated by a single person. So. I have a question whether you guys communicate during the process of translation or submitting your results to the author uh, just to check whether he's going to be happy with it or not, or it's uh, none of the concern that you are um, you're a translator or you're a co-creator, like you're just rewriting this in a way. I, I can tell this, like, the, that's a funny story how, yeah. like, this, this little one of the one of the uh, poems in this book it says translated with the author. Yeah. Actually, I I finished it. And I really wanted to share, and it's like I see this like green dot next to the author in on Facebook. Yeah. So I, I go jump on Messenger and say, "Here's a translation. It's a little rough." And uh, I said, I replies, yeah, it's kind of rough. I don't like this and I don't like that. And we have this conversation over Messenger, basically a chat for about an hour and a half mm -hmm. with uh, trying different things, uh, you know, and something she suggested. Say, oh, great. This is a great line. Yeah. But she's, she's actually, she's a technical translator, but she's a translator in, from Russian into English. And, and then she says, no, I cannot spend any more time on this because we are moving. Uh -huh. And I'm like, Okay, sure. And then I'm thinking, but they just moved a couple months ago. I know this from her like news feed. Why is she moving again? And it turned out that that particular day they were moving from Moscow to Israel. <laughs> she still like spent one and a half hours chatting with me about the, the translation, and then she had to run basically. I see. Uh, so so you mostly in. Like a uh, friend, you you friends with the authors you are translating, or you no. not necessarily have like personal <laughs> encounters with them. This is all highly individual for each uh, text that we have. Um, obviously, all authors saw the translations. Uh, some of them want nothing to do with any edits. They trust you blindly. Perhaps they don't speak English, or they do, and they think this is now yours. Um, other authors do want to exert a fair amount of control over how their text appears in English. Um, the authors whose texts I translated for this book were all um, very generous and I did not collaborate with anybody on a translation, which is, it's not an uncommon practice. Mm -hmm. It does happen collaborating with the author. For me, I didn't. Um, I think Andre did. Um, I think Mita did. I don't remember. Is there a Lupomnikov that was? Not there? mine. No, not, oh, not, not yours. Mine. Okay. Yeah. But some, some authors do feel very strongly about their texts and they think this is my baby and how it looks in every language should be under my control. 
um, and others do not. So yeah. Thank you. How do you choose the poetry you would like to translate? The one that speaks the most to you, or it's a very straightforward uh, sectioning, uh, um, sharing between each other, a amount of poetry? For me, it was um, a combination of factors. Uh, sometimes it was a piece that was about a topic or a piece of news that was killing me that day. Um, sometimes it is a text that I feel is lyrically close to me. How this how this author writes about this problem is, I get it. This is how I think about the world as well. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's really formally interesting. Uh, and... Ballad meter. Hmm? Ballad meter. Ba oh, sometimes it's the ballad meter. I cannot resist. Anything in a, in a ballad meter, come to me, I'll translate it. So, <laughs> but yeah, and maybe Rita has something else to say. Or... And sometimes you read the first two lines and you know exactly how they how they could could sound. How English. this is gonna go. Yeah, yeah. and then and then yeah, they cannot mm -hmm. resist anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And, and somehow it like just, it's, it's the kind of serendipity. Usually for me, it means that it's gonna be easy. I, I will not struggle, I will struggle a little bit. Uh, but uh, well, sometimes it is that you will struggle, and you're like, "Oh, okay, this, this, this one's for me. I'm gonna cut my teeth on it." I see. Like I, 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 I always struggle. It, no. there, there's no such thing as an easy translation, <laughs> to me at least. Um, but uh, yeah, in addition to those reasons, sometimes um, a poem cries to be translated precisely because it's obviously impossible to translate. Mm -hmm. So that's a challenge that's what fires you up sometimes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned that um, the Kapilka project, I believe it has something about 2000 poetries nowadays. Should we expect the second book? Um, it's growing daily. Yeah. Um, there's, there's maybe over 2000 items and definitely a lot more translations that that are in this book and we continue to make them and we are in discussion uh with publishing houses about the potentiality of approaching the idea of starting to think about anyways <laughs> it's, it's a long project um every time you make a book it takes forever so but yes we are we just might have something else coming out maybe next year. I just said, like, last time I counted, there was I forgot something around three or four hundred translations. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, thanks. I just uh want to note that uh, all the translations are beautiful, the, the tone of this poetry is varies, but somehow the translations totally interconnected with it. I mean. Reading both in English and Russian, I found it. Um, well, we we aim aim yeah. to do good work. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, let's... we are actually very lucky uh -huh. that um, that the, the the group of translators basically shares the principles, the ideas, the oh, yeah. tenets of uh, what what a good translation should look like, mm -hmm. and so. And we do like edits, not necessarily all round robin, but Mita and I edit each other a lot. And um, there's, I know other translators also collaborate. So to be a part of, of, of a group of like-minded people mm -hmm. is probably critical, criti critically important uh, in such a project. Okay. There's, there's also, I mean, this, I, I don't know if I should open this Pandora box. I, I have this, uh, <laughs> I, have, I have a friend who, who, who likes reading poetry, like both in English and Russian. He says, something is wrong in, with your translations. I'm like, why? And he said, well, when I read your translations, he said, I understand it. I mean, it's like, like, it's, like it's in Russian. I can read it. It's, if, if I read something written, originally written in English, he says, I'm, I struggle, I, I stumble over it, I cannot understand what it is. Something is wrong, maybe you're not using good English or something, <laughs> maybe it's, uh, I don't know why, but this is this is, this is is one of the reactions I, I, I got that kind of, you know, it's, um, 
is the language slightly different from like, the language of like well, it's not like totally strict here. Which is like, <laughs> <laughs> keep some secrets. Keep some secrets. Yeah, no, this this is indeed as long as the end product. A, 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 a very um, very difficult question. Uh, how do you translate grind and meter go grind or meter? Close the box. Close. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I knew I should. Close the box. <laughs> Thank you. Well, maybe maybe for the Q and A. Yes. If we yeah. Can. Or. Um, I think we can proceed with the reading the poetry, if you don't mind. Uh, sure. Yeah. I would like to start putting them. And then, yeah, uh, Dmitry is translated Polina's poetry, so maybe Dmitry can read this translation after that. Also, I wanted to say before I begin reading um, that so, so there is such a thing as uh, an anthology of poetry uh, as a form, as a forum. It's a very curious thing. Uh, we do know that ontologists might have endless uh, purposes. Um, this one, I think, or these ones of this kind are peculiar. Uh, obviously, the like, ontology is a body of texts united by something. So th these are texts united by the topic, but also curiously united by temporality, right? So these are poems about Russo-Ukrainian war written at the beginning of this war and poems chosen by a number of translators. But even from what just sounded, and these conversations, I think what's obvious is that this anthology is a community. It, it, it's a conversation. And then anthology of this kind continues working. Like you coming to this room, obviously it's the second step of how this anthology works. This community opens and attracts more participants. Um, and this is absolutely crucial since we all kind of understand that among many, many, many things that the present war managed to do gloriously, it destroyed communities. It broke us apart variously. Um, and this work as precious or frivolous it might be. I think it's absolutely imperative because even in a tiny room or in our rooms, it brings people, it connects people back, which is actually very, very difficult because we all feel variously betrayed, uh, including betrayed by ourselves and building this back is something that supposedly we're trying to do. How successfully? It's a good question. So I will read two poems and then Mitya will read translations and then I will read one poem without translation, just like that. Uh, the first one uh, is called Dien Poraženje, посвящает Lenny Karin. И это кончится, конечно, и оно. Как бы невыносимое кино, как сон во сне, бегущий пробуждение, кровав рассвет возникнет и коряв, 
и выплаканных глаз уймется Женя. Так кот мне лежит горькие глаза. Так в этом ты находишь утешение. Когда с небес сойдут орел и лев, и грянет горький пир перерождения в большой невосполнимой пустоте. И рядом на перу сойдутся те, кто предал, потерял, изжил друг друга, кто ложью стал и кто утратой стал, кто стал водою мертвой и живою. И будет течь в перу там, по устам. Молчание, уподобленное вою. Say, the day of defeat. Say, will this also end? Yes, it will too. Just like a dream that flees the world into another dream, a nightmare movie reel, a bloody dawn will break, a gnarly dawn. And then my eyes, burned through with tears, will heal, as when the cat licks at my bitter eyes. Is that the sauce you've been counting on? When down from heaven the eagle and lion come, the bitter feast will blast the seventh seal, the feast of rebirth in the void that gapes. And seated there will be the shadowy shapes of those who've lost, betrayed, outgrown each other, become a loss or else become a lie, turned into water of death, water of life, and at that festive table, every chalice and all their lips will flow with howl-like silence. So, well, the uh, how like silence, uh, since uh, I, I am amazingly and curiously representing here the Guild of Poets, uh, as opposed to as connected to the Guild of Translators. Uh, I find it to be absolutely, um, yeah, dreamlike. That's strange. The conversation that I've been having for this year with the poets. Um, we ask each other when we see each other or oh, in various um, technological situations, like, do you write? Are you writing? Are you writing? And some do and some do not. And you absolutely don't really understand. You, you know that there is no correct way now. No. Sometimes silence is more difficult or more valuable or more painful than actually writing. Sometimes writing is a relief. Um, Sarokin, as some of you know, came through the Bay Area. Um, some, I guess, when was it? Oh, at the end of the last year, maybe in January. Uh, and he said a remarkable thing to, in a Q&A. He said, so everybody is like, Da, da, da. How did you predict all this? Isn't this amazing? And what do you feel about this? That you just prescripted what's happening now? Are you writing now? And then he said, No, I'm not writing. I can, 
I know how not to write. Я могу не писать. And I was really struck by this phrase. Because at this point, this thing, whether you can write or can or cannot help writing, the physiology, phys, creative physiology of the moment is absolutely unique. I spent December in Berlin where like, it, it's becoming funny, awful, because it's a centennial return of 1923, just then Khodasevich and Shklovsky we're sitting in the cafe and now it's Alexievich, Stepanova, Gulen and many others and Gutnikova, the same cafes. Uh, and we're constantly trying to understand how our physiologists work in response to all this. So this was an excessively long intro to the just the fact that now I'll read the first poem that I was able to write uh, after the war started. Uh, Gorod. Uh, с эпиграфом из газеты «Известия» представитель ДНР сообщает, что под Азовсталью, возможно, есть подземный город, затрудняющий штурм Азовстали. По тому надземному переходу на Невском, где тебя сбила машина, и сегодня спешат люди. Добрые люди, как сказано в детском романе. Любящие своих близких, боящиеся смерти. Такие же, как и я, с трусцой, гнильцой в тепловатом сердце. С желанием думать о себе получше поглаже. Над пешеходным переходом зияет новая буква, издает зловоние злосвечение, как дохлая крыса, гнилая брюква. Кто-то добавил новую букву в мой алфавит. Ладный, нежный. Кто-то наклеил новую букву на мой ненаглядный город. Как это получилось? Как это получилось в каком-то смысле теперь неважно. Что было здесь раньше, в каком-то смысле теперь, неважно. Почему ты умер в каком-то смысле теперь, неважно. Важно понять, что больше здесь уже ничего никогда не будет. Понимание. Понимание состоит из каждого нового утра в пустоте, в отвращении, в одиночестве, в жалком крике на языке, посреди которого сияет, зияет новая буква, как голова любимого, раздавленная на щербленном асфальте. А когда я впервые тебя увидела в пяти минутах ходьбы от этого самого перехода, я так на тебя смотрела, я так на тебя смотрела, на твою голову, прекрасную, как светильник, что ты, засмеявшись, спросил, со мной что-то не так? И я сказала, не знаю, посмотрим. Из-за этой живой картины я покинула ненаглядный город, но из собой его забрала, в себя его втравила, как в каверну в зубе капсулу с ядом. В яркой толпе его мертвецов стала своею. Самозванка-шпионка-притворщица примелькалась. И теперь этот яд совершает свою работу. Понимание. Понимание состоит в том, что есть вещи похуже смерти. Город мой бедный. Город мой бедный стал городом пышным. Скука. Обывателям лежат руки, как верная сука. Все говорят о завтрашнем дне. Будет ли белым, черным, горячим, холодным? Покупают газеты, новостям равнодушно кривятся, вздыхают, вздыхают ценам, смотрят кроссфорд, прогноз погоды. 
какая в городе нашем будет завтра погода, какая в городе вашем будет завтра погода, в городе нашем погода завтра будет такая. Пойдет и пал, и падает Вавилон, город великий, потому что он яростным вином блуда своего напоил все народы. Кто поклоняется зверю и образу его и принимает начертание на чело свое или на руку свою, тот будет пить вино ярости Божией и вино цельное, приготовленное в чаше, в чаше гнева его и будет мучим в огне и в сере пред святыми ангелами, слышишь меня, и перед агнцем. City. Epigraph from Zvesti newspaper. DPR representative. Beneath Azov's stall there is an underground city which complicates our assault. April 15, 2022. On that street crossing on the Nevsky where you were hit by a car, people are hurrying now, kind people as they are called in a kid's novel, loving their families, fearing death, people like me with a lukewarm heart touched by rot, by terror, wishing to think themselves a little nicer, better. Above the street crossing gapes the new letter. It exudes an evil stench, a lurid glow, like a dead, wet, rotten rutabaga. Someone stuck a new letter into my alphabet, so neat, so mellow, Someone slapped the new letter onto my beloved city. In a sense, how it happened doesn't matter anymore. In a sense, what had been here before doesn't matter anymore. In a sense, why you died doesn't matter anymore. What matters is to comprehend what's gone forever. This comprehension involves every new morning in desolation, loathing, loneliness, in the wretched screeching of my tongue, cankered in the middle with a new letter, like my lover's crushed head on the pockmarked pavement. And when I first saw you in a five-minute walk from this crossing, the way you looked at you, at this head beautiful as a luminous lamp, you laughed and asked something wrong with me. And I said, I don't know. Because of this moving picture, I left my beloved city, but I also took it with me, etched into myself, implanted like a cyanide capsule in a hollow tooth. I, I wormed myself into the garish crowd with dead people. An imposter, spy, a fraud, insinuated into familiarity. And now the poison slowly doing its job. The comprehension is that there are things worse than death. This poor city of mine became a city of splendor. Boredom licks the locals' hands like a loyal bitch. The talk of the city is the tomorrow. Will it be white, black, hot, cold? Buying newspapers, grimacing indifferently at the news, sighing at the prices, staring at the crossword puzzle at the weather forecast. 
One should like to know what kind of weather befalls our city tomorrow. And this is the weather forecast for our city. It shall fall, it's fallen, it's falling. Babylon, the great city, because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone before the holy angels and before the Lamb. Would you like to read another one? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Andrea, do you need a copy? Um, so Paulina touched upon the question of writing or not writing, silence or not silence, poets creating poetry or not, and not just poets, and what to do and what is right and how everybody, how there is no right or wrong answer or the individual answer for each individual person may actually change from morning to night. In the morning, you wake up and you think, I should say nothing, and then by you, you have to say something or you're done. I don't know. Um, so I, I do write war poems, and I hate them. I hate them. I, they're my unfavorite stepchildren. I don't want the, this war to take up residence in the world, and I don't want it to take residence in my brain, and it does. Um, and so these poems, they are sort of like the effluvium that a sick person produces. I don't like to reread them. I never look at them and say, oh, we can sing. that never happens. Um, I don't finish them. Half of them I don't post. Some, some of them I post on Facebook, like every good Russian person, and then I take them down. Um, so it is more like, I'm, I'm sorry for this unsavory image, but it's more like vomit or sputum. It comes out. Um, and it is not great, and I guess I just have to move on and live on, and I cannot actually wait to to return to the more sane, peaceful, I don't even know, not, not nice, not positive things. I, I am fairly, a fairly sad person in peacetime, but I just don't want to have to write about the war. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes I do. So for the um, lit scholars of the future or for the anthology analysts, you look at these poems and you can actually sort most of them by communicative purpose. Um, some of them are laments, some of them are prayers, some of them are incantatory, uh, some of them are reflections, uh, some of them are philosophical, some of them are parables and there is um, more so in the Kapilka, but there's always this poem that's a hex, that's a curse, that's, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So this is one of, one of those, really short and in Mita's translation, it will appear in a second. И те, что кричали тебе, бог, бог, завтра будут кричать, сдох. Сдох. Вдруг вспомнят тобой удавленных малых сих. И каждый тобой отравленный старый псих, те, что ласкали твой ствол. Жарь, жарь, услышат, зовет тебя ад. Тварь, тварь. Те, кто таскал твой подол, рад, рад, увидят, ползешь под пол. В смрад, в смрад. Слиняют те, кто молился на твой огнемет, задушит тебя язык и башка отгниет. И жирные черви полезут из черных глазниц. Не съедут. And those who used to hail you, God, God, tomorrow will yell after you, gone, gone. Suddenly they will remember all those you've snuffed and every old geezer who, 
could bought your bluff and guff, who used to stroke your staff. Come, come, we we'll hear hell calling you, scum, scum. Those who fought for your coat tails, wink, wink, will see you crawling under and stink, stink. Who worship your howitzer will bail out on the spot. You'll choke on your own tongue and your head will rot. And out of your black sockets, fat worms will gush, inedible for the nightingale in the thrush. Mm -hmm. um, and this one was um, written as a, after, you know, the war started and they talked to my people in Russia. I have a lot of people in Russia, friends, family, of how things were for them, what they were thinking. Um, and this is just in the first week of the war. Farsh. Может, вы очнулись в Божьей сумерке. Гля, а черная не завтра висит, вися. Но не все еще предъявлены номерки. Но не все еще проверены подпися. Все обязанности так же, как и вчера. Кто пока живет не в жопе, не на призыв. Напишите, напишите, стишок пера. Подпишите, подпишите, письмо призыв. Почитайте Аль-Джазиру, чего бы нет. Посмотрите на Ютубе. Протеста, марш. Но пока не ваша очередь на паштет. Тут до вас еще другие пойдут на фарш. В понедельник по присутствиям, без затей. Юбки гладим, жопы в горсти и все вперед. Запишите в летний лагерь своих детей. Это будущее ваше. This one is self-translated. Hash. Still? There are some numbers left that need numbering. There are signatures we still need to verify. All of your responsibilities still apply. If you don't live in a hellhole, do not enlist. Go on, write a little poem and sigh and cry. Sign a little letter so the bad guys desist. Go on reading Al Jazeera, why yes you may. Watch YouTube to see police and protesters clash. At this time, it's not your turn to become pate. You are not the first in line to be chopped or hash. Monday morning, back to office, now be a champ. Iron skirt and button gear, and do not be late. Also, do sign up your kids for that summer camp. They're your future. It's your future, and it won't wait. Um, quick note, all of those uh, poems arise in tones. That's why um, I think it's pretty cool that they show all the dimensions of this war. Um, if you cannot relate to this particular one, you can definitely relate to the next one. Sure. But yeah. Right. We do... Do you want to do Guleyeva? Uh, yeah. So, Olga Guleyeva is a Krasnoyarsk poet, is in Krasnoyarsk, was and remains. Okay, I'm talking about the guy. Thank you. I прекрасно понимаю, что давно не вам подали, что давно уже в команде отыгравший первый тайм. Точка, точка, запятая, огуречек, два крыла. Я вот этой фам фаталью никогда и не была. Дух святой в домах родется по небесному лучу. Я сижу в своей Сибири, макадами лучу. Или это нанороботт, или это лысый хрен. Прорубай окно в Европу через серый VPN. Прорубай окно в Европу, антилопой станешь гну. Стик, наверное, херовый, если он не про войну. За окном летают души, ни по небу ни хрена. За окном поют Катюшу. Я рыдаю у окна. I'm aware that time has passed for me to be a femme fatale. Past my prime, I've, I've passed the prime time. And in fact, I've passed the ball. 
My stick figure is made of sticks, two dots, a comma, and two wings. I was never really known for any fun fatality things. The Holy Spirit rides the sun rays, making houses cheerier. I'm cracking macadamia at home in my Siberia. This could be a nano rabbit or a balding dick again. There's your Europe. Cut your window. Use your trusty VPN. There's your Europe. Cut your window. Anti-loping, anti-door. This may be a shitty rhyme since it is not about the war. Outside, souls are flying, whooshing, not through heaven, but through hail. Outside, someone sings Katusha. Inside, I just sit and wail. Uh, yeah, just pretty long, so we can just do an extract or we want to proceed with the full thing. Whatever you decide. Okay. All right. Um, let's go. Алексей Оленников. Летит весь мир ко всем чертям, война по всем фронтам. Ракеты бьют по площадям, больницам и домам. Вопрос нелеп, смешон и глуп, как чучело моржа. Скажите, братцы, как вести мне в Грузию ежа? И смех, и грех, и стыд, и срам, Гамора и садом. Какой тут ёж, когда альбом обрушился весь дом? Какой тут ёж, когда детей в охапку и бежать? Какой тут ёж, когда тебя решили убивать? Да, знаем, знаем, орки мы, мордва, машка, машка. Нас выплюнет родной народ, его сметет рука. Не рады здесь, не рады там, и мы бежим, бежа. Скажите все же, как вести мне в Грузию ежа? Нам слишком долго внятен был эфирный перезвон. Нам выше долго лил елей вечерний мудозвон. Рассохлись скрепа, слышен виск из стона крепежа. Скажите, как теперь нам быть? И как вести ежа? Откуда эта чушь и блажь мож, московский сытый бред? Из довоенных теплых дней, каких уж больше нет. Под хвост какая, милый друг, попал вам в вожа. Куда бежите вы? Зачем вы тащите ежа? Везут собак и обезьян, шиншил и хомяков. И попугаев, и кротов, сурков, и пауков везут котов по черепах, енотов и чижа. Но нет ответа, как вести меня в Грузию ежа. Куда, куда вы собрались, национал-бомжи? Не в этом, в общем, не нужны, не ваши, блин, ежи. А может, ешь ваш патриот, он любит сок берез? Или ин ему куда милее, чем сартер и делез? Сметают сахар, спички, соль. Настал последний час, и месяц март, как леденец, облизывает нас. Глупее фронта не сыскать. Тупее мятежа, иди на площадь, наконец. Возьми с собой ежа. Пусть он покажет, как вставать навстречу в укризет. Пусть он покажет, как держать за всех один ответ. Когда на улицах союз гадюк и гипножаб, ежи нужнее на Руси. Пусть он возглавит штаб. Нам не отмыться до седин, до самых смертных дней. Бывали хуже времена, но не было смешней. Чужая жизнь на волоске, на кончике ножа. Она все мучает вопрос, как вывести ежа. Учил нас летчик Антуан, но позабыт урок. Когда растили мы детей, кто шел на третий срок? Когда сажали дивный сад и объявляли сбор, кто убивал, кто воровал и кто точил топор? Мы думали, что он ручной и что он на цепи. Проснулся господин дракон и пасть его в крови. Нам отвечать за палачей, преступников, варюк, хотя они не ели хлеб из наших слабых рук. Летим по миру, будто пух. Чертополох, трава, перекати по полю тень, перепиши слова. Ах, Катя, вот уже сто лет царапина свежа. И снова мучает вопрос, куда девать ежа? So this poem took the internet by the storm um, when, when he wrote it and posted it. The world is going to the dogs. It's war on every front. Airstrikes on hospitals and homes. Civilians bear the brunt. My question may be dumb and dopey, like a drunken doe. But if I go to Georgia now, then can my hedgehog go? It's stupid, shameful, sinful soda mayhem, run or bust. How can I think of hedgehogs when your house is blown to dust? How can I think of hedgehogs when you grab the kids and run? How can I think of hedgehogs when they want you dead and gone? We know, we know, the orcs, the plebs, the grubs, the gnats, the scum. Our grand old nation spits us out and grinds under its thumb. Unwanted here, unwanted there, 
skedaddling as we flee. But can my hedgehog come to Georgia if he comes with me? We were too clear on what they meant, broadcasting that old song. The evening ringer of the balls would loudly ring his dong. The stables squeak. We hear the screeching of old pins and pegs. Where do we go? And do our hedgehogs come on their own legs? What's all this hogwash, balderdash, these comfy Moscow words? Those were the days before the war, which won't be afterwards. What's wrong with you, my sweet old friend? Is something up your craw? Why do you run and pull along your hedgehog by the paw? They're bringing dogs and marmosets, chinchillas, mice and rats, and skinks and parrots, moles and voles, plus hamsters, spiders, bats. They're bringing cats and turtles, and someone has a grub. But can my hedgehog come to Georgia? Can he? There's the rub. Where are you running? Traitors, gnats, you pointless, homeless, spawn. Nobody wants you, nor the hedgehogs that you rode in on. Your hedgehog loves his country where birches give him juice. What if he hates your Sartre and your decadent Deleuze? Salt, sugar, matches going gone, it's the apocalypse. March licks us like a lollipop stuck between his lips. There is no riot stupider, no mutiny as dumb. Take to the streets and take your hedgehog. This time he can come. He'll show them how to rise against the spiky letter Z. He'll show them there's no I in the weapon. There is only we. We're fighting vipers in cahoots with toads that lie on cue. Russia needs your hedgehog. He'll be heading the HQ. We'll never wash this stink away. We'll always wear this stain. Yes, we've seen harder times before, but never more inane. Whole lives are hanging off this cliff. So fragile, touch and go. Yet, hedgehog travel tips are what we really want to know. Antoine, the pilot, said some words, but which we can't confirm. We raised our kids, but who was that who ran for his third term? We planted lovely gardens and gathered fruits in sacks, but who was that who killed and stole and sharpened his old axe? We really thought that he was tame, just snarling in his crate, but Smaug woke up, red with the blood of everyone he ate. We are responsible for killers, torturers, and heels. Although it wasn't our weak hands that offered them their meals. We roll around like tumbleweeds, like thistles, seed heads, small. Our shadows rolling through the hay. Our pans are rollerball. It's been a century, and we have always felt this form. But what about my hedgehog? I am completely torn. Fabulous. Thank you. Right, maybe we can read some of yours and we can press it in and face. Okay. Okay, we're reading. Сто шесть человек прибыли, тридцать четыре мамы из Мариуполя, без языка, без денег, без соцсетей, с вопросами, запросами, с нервами, а не просами. Дети держатся, родители держатся за детей. Коротко стриженный мальчик рисует Деда Мороза, потом резко штрихует черным. Что это? Бомба, взрыв. Дядя, о чем вы это борода? Мальчик смеется из-под руки. Ну, дураки эти взрослые, ну и дураки. Взрослые ищут платформу. Залпом выходит сеть. Дети держатся лучше них, держатся лучше нас, держатся лучше всех. После четырех дней и ночей дороги. Мама, у меня встали ноги. Мама, я хочу спать. Мама, болит вот здесь. Только этого ничего нет. А что есть? Дядя, меня зовут Вова, а тебя как? Можно бабушке водички? Дякую. Мам, не надо мороженое, дорого на вокзале. Переведите, будь ласка, что там сказали? <coughs> Поезд кудит мирным своим гудком, взъерошенной челкой, сломанным ноготком. 
заплетенной косичкой, книжкой в руке, кошкой в переноске, собачкой на поводке. Это у взрослых ничего, нет ничего, паспорт и чемодан, еще и зарядка, без которой вообще кают. А дети держат любой удар, они пластичнее, чем удар, они прозрачнее, чем удар. Они как вода, журчат и поют, даже когда молчат, все равно поют. Дети лечат страх, дети снимают боль, детям проще. Мама с собой, значит, все с собой. Группа из 10 человек, половина глухонемых. Волонтер пакистанец не знает, кому поручить билет. Вот этой девочке, ей же 12 лет. Я говорю с ней, бро, она взрослее, чем мы. Боже, вот я стою в своем пальто, в бесполезном своем пальто, в самом тылу добра. Боже, будь ласка, дай ей немного детства, хотя бы потом. Верни ей то, что сейчас забрал. Feels like very true. I mean, he really like went to volunteer, uh, you know, uh, welcoming the refugees to Germany, and I guess that's like that's what came out of this in terms of poetry. But uh, uh, Alexander also himself, he's like you know, when when people ask him, you know, what what actually what did they translate? And he's oh, like they translate this this poem about kids. This uh, you know, like a popular thing. <laughs> He somehow did not think of this one as being a serious. Is uh, serious poetry serious? Mm -hmm. I don't know. As like more serious and harder for me to understand. <laughs> But this one. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Yeah. Anyway, uh, 106 people arrived. 34 could leave. Mothers from Mariupol, grandmothers from Kharkiv. No money. No one speaks the language. No networking skills questions, demands, things getting out of hand, the kids hold on. The adults hold on to the kids. A boy with short hair draws Santa, then suddenly adds a black smear. What is it? An explosion? A bomb? Can't you see? It's his beard. The boy laughs, peeking from under his arm. Adults are sometimes so dumb. They really are. The adults find out where and when, grab a coffee, get lost in the internet. The kids hold on better than them, better than us or anyone else ever. After four days and nights spent on the road, mommy, my legs are worn out. Mommy, I need a rest. Mommy, it hurts right here. Except I heard none of that. What did I hear? Hi, my name is Vlad and what's yours? Can I have some water for grandma? Thank you. Don't buy ice cream. Here it costs the earth. Could you translate for me, please? What are they saying? The locomotive's humming its peace, peaceful air with disorderly hair, a broken nail, string of bangs holding a teddy bear, a cat in a carrier, a pup wagging its tail. Adults don't have much, just their passport, a carry-on, and a charger, which, which is essential to run the show. But the kids, Can, can dodge any blow, they evade the blow, they can flow with it like water, they croon and flow, even when they're silent, still they're crooning on. Kids take away the pain, kids heal the fear, for them it's simple, if mom is here, everything's here. A group of 10 people, many of them are deaf, a volunteer from Pakistan is not sure to whom the ticket should go, to that girl, girl over there but she's only 12. I spoke to her. She's more adult than us. <coughs> oh Lord, here I stand, wearing all white, wearing the useless white in the real lines of good. Please, later on, give her back some of her childhood. Give her back, dear Lord, what was taken away in this fight. All right, this one by Alek Desmorok. Um, in my understanding, that's their attempt not to write about the war, but it's still about the war. 
<laughs> yes, yes. This, okay. this falls very much into what we were saying. Too. Yeah. Okay. But also stylistically, I think it's an interesting for translation as well. Okay. На явшемуся бодру снится сон моему коту. Он шри в штате Мишиган. У него звезда и есть Ган. Как щедр кошачий бог, велик кошачий господь. На пожитях злачных ох, роял канина горсть, не щепать. На стезях не боюсь зла, в коридоре темном пройду. Он со мной, такие дела, низку полной всегда найду. Рай – это о том, что сон все, что было, проснувшись, знает. Господь щит мой, и я спасен, буду руки его вязать. Благость, милость в жизни моей, и проснуться я не готов. Пока люди стреляют в людей, я буду писать. At daybreak, my overfed cat is dreaming vividly that he is a sheriff in my second state with a star, a gun, and a hat. How generous is cat's God! How great is the Lord of cats on the pastures of my true Lord! Royal cannon is rich with bread. In my ways, I will fear no evil. In the hall, when the light is dim, he is always with me, and I will find my bow filled up to the brim. It's a paradise when you wake up and up. It all was a dream. My Lord and my shield, I'm saved. I will lick his hands, lick them clean. Grace and virtue run through my days. Waking up is not part of the plan when people put people to death. For cats, I reserve my pet. Hi, Dmitry. Would you like to um, choose this one? I mean, in fact, it's pretty hard to choose because uh, they all speak up to you in one way or another. Uh, this one is written by um, the Ukrainian poet, right? He's uh, identified himself as Yudovsky, as Ukrainian. Yeah, yeah. He's a Kievan. Mm -hmm. um, he's also an artist. He lives in Germany. And he's, I don't know. Thank you. Yeah, well. Меня бомбят издалека. Хотя вокруг покой, молчит земля, молчит река, и небо над рекой. Часы, недели и века как будто скрылись в щель. Меня бомбят издалека, но попадают в цель. По телу пробегает ток и видится с трудом немецкий тихий городок, похожий на фантом. Друзья, нас поперек и вдоль одна связала нить, но боль мою и вашу боль не смею я сравнить. Вдали от собственной страны я ощущаю смесь бессилия, гнева и вины за то, что я не здесь, не в Украине, чья броня закрыла, с собой закрыла свет, а там, где, кажется, меня уже в помине нет. И мысль только об одном, хоть мозг до тырса три, и слышим взрыв не за окном, а где-то там, внутри. Но, может, я еще сгожусь, я все еще стерплю, я восхищаюсь, я горжусь, я плачу, я люблю. Страна, не рви со мной нить, пока я боль рощу. Прости меня. И, может быть, я сам себя прощу. Yeah, so the, this is um, an address to his compatriots. They bomb me from afar, although here all is quiet and still. The silent stream our Crouch in a catacomb. They bomb me from afar. Each strike is hitting home. A shock of electricity. I feel as if I am lost. And this quiet town in Germany looks almost like a ghost. Between us, friends, through hill and plain runs a connecting line. But I dare not compare your pain, your dreadful pain. With mine. Because I live in foreign lands, I feel day after day a mix of guilt, powerlessness, angst for being far away 
from my Ukraine, whose armor lets the whole world carry on. Where, where I live, I am but a guest who might as well be gone. And all the time the same, same thought bores tunnels in my mind. And I can hear blasts rumbling, not in town, but deep inside. But I'll be useful. I'll pull through to help you. I believe, admire you, and take pride in you. I love you, and I grieve. Please do not break my lifeline to you while I grow my pain. I may forgive myself if you forgive me, my Ukraine. I have this uh, tiny one, maybe we can rip up with it. Uh, it's called Законно мирное время. Запрещено говорить война, запрещено говорить вой, запрещено говорить на, запрещено говорить, запрещено быть, запрещено быть. Война запрещена и мир. Yeah. This is Galidana Zinger, an Israeli poet. It is forbidden to say war. It is forbidden to wail sore. It is forbidden to sail sore. It is forbidden to plead. It is forbidden to bleed. It is forbidden to be. War is forbidden. End peace. Thank you. Thank you. Marvelous. I really admire. Poetry is ampersations. I think it's absolutely beautiful. And uh, with that, uh, we're going to move forward towards questions. Um, does that one is what is okay? Go ahead, please. Uh, I have a question about uh, is it is there any plan to make an audio version of the book, or is it available by any chance? Good question. And, if and we'll, these poems yeah. happen, do they happen to be like? Do they usually? My understanding is that they are usually on forums that people put them up but not necessarily accompanied by someone by voice, right? This is a really cool cool idea mm -hmm. and a great question. I don't believe we've considered this, but now that you mention it, uh, we can discuss with Yulia, who's the editor, uh, with the publisher. Yeah. Um, because once the book is out, we have to consider various copyright um, angles and things like that. Um, but it probably would be a good idea to have an audio version. Uh, I also wanted to say that actually after like lots of poets left Russia after war started and also lots of uh, like movie stars, theater actors, right? All sorts of people left. So quite a few of them now uh, do this uh, poetry readings on YouTube. And uh, some of them are absolutely like, uh, one, some of the greatest artists, like actors of, you know, that, that I know, Russian actors actually come forward and start reading uh, recent war poetry. So. Uh, I think what you're saying is, yeah, the, the idea is, is in the air. There's, um, there's a play. It is actually currently touring. I don't know if it's coming to the East Coast, but um, a production, a theatrical production, which is a, um, a play, is a one actor play, and um, the actor in question is Anatoly Bailey. He's coming. Oh, he is? He's coming uh, okay. to the West Coast. Yes. yes. I, I, I to the West Coast. Yes, I'm, I'm sorry. In June. I misspoke. June. Yes. And so in that play, and I don't know if they're going to arrange for super titles, 
uh, because it will be here. Um, but in that play, there are several, I, I think, I believe there are nine poems included um, at our part of the play that are translated into English. And there's a, an overlap. There's a big overlap between what's in disbelief and what's in that play. Probably all of the poems in in the um, show are in this book as well. So it is getting spoken. This poetry is getting spoken. Um, there are a lot of readings. Um, there's a lot of anthology readings, all the multiple anthologies people are putting out, um, or just readings. So there's um, actually a lot of read material um, online. But it's not necessarily the audio version of this book. He, he's going to be in San Francisco. He is. Cool. I, I knew he was coming to Chicago, but I did not know. He's going to the end of June. Thank you for your question. Have another one? I have another. Sure. Go ahead. So one thing, I'm from Iran myself. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, like when I was listening to the poetry, like a lot of the feelings that are expressed, even though Iran is not currently in a war, but there is a lot of civil unrest that leads to people leaving the country. So I was thinking, <laughs> to your knowledge, has this uh, has this poetry been translated in languages where, um, I mean, let's say the word of, let's use the word of solidarity. Like I could imagine that if, Iranian people could read this poetry in Farsi, they would be like, I know exactly mm. what they're saying. So to your knowledge, has it been translated in like maybe Arabic or Persian? You know, not not that not that we know of. And yeah. I think I'm speaking for everybody. There there have been um translations into European languages, um, other than um uh, English. Uh, French, German, so you're the big hitters. I know Hungarian. Oh, yeah. Hungarian! <laughs> I had a poem translated into Hungarian. That was just the pinnacle of my life. Um, it looks beautiful. I don't know what it says. Um, <laughs> but this is actually a really, really uh, another cool idea that you're coming up with because the thinking, I guess, does tend to be Eurocentric, and I don't think it is very beneficial that Eurocentricity. But it, it's yeah. great to hear what, yeah. what you said, that, yeah. that, that people would know exactly, exactly. what you're saying. Because, mm -hmm. yes, we were, we were looking at Iran when the recent events were going on. And, you know, you can't, you, you can't help comparing mm -hmm. and, and feeling solidarity and all other mm -hmm. such feelings. But who could do it? But who could but, do it? Yes. I, yeah. but maybe do you know, know somebody? Well, uh, I'm trying it out. And I can reach out to the community. But one reason why this idea came up was first because it was like amazing how the feelings were so recognizable. Uh, but also in this thing that happened in Iran and the world are always so connected. But the people mm -hmm. themselves, mm -hmm. in their struggles, they're so isolated. Mm -hmm. And there was actually a push to say, well, we can learn from people and how they're struggling against other dictators. And actually, they ended up, um, you know, through the internet, connecting with other countries and how they're uh, doing, how they're... That is, that is really very cool. And um, we just unfortunately do not know any Russian to Farsi translators. And we don't even, I don't know a single English to Farsi translator, but the, the English translations could serve as a bridge if there were a person um, or persons available to take this on. This would be only yeah. awesome. Okay. <laughs> yeah. as, as far as I understand, mm -hmm. at least uh, they, they told me that like uh, Iran and like Farsi language has a century long, very strong poetic tradition. So that yeah. that that would be a very natural thing, I and mean, that's another thing that is kind of parallel between the two countries. So, if you come up with anything, sure, you know where to find us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Does do you? Do you? <laughs> <laughs> do you know where to find us? Is the next question. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Okay. But I uh, we could exchange there. email addresses. Thank you. Does anybody else have a question? So, yeah. Andrei, you said at the beginning that for you it was some kind of an idea of a phrase book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> it was a metaphor, but... <laughs> was it a driving force? Uh, I, I mean, I think I, I dabbled with translation before, but not really. I mean, the, the, here I kind of, you know, helped me with a sense of purpose. But in terms of, you know, no, I, I, I wasn't really like thinking of creating a phrase book when I was translating this. But I think it, we could use it as that uh, more, not maybe not directly as, but maybe sometimes even directly in terms of, you know, you just come, you know, if, 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 if you know someone who is, uh, um, um, I mean, who likes poetry and uh, is an English speaker, right? I mean, you mm -hmm. actually, I mean, Coming with this book, you kind of uh, share because mm -hmm. uh, here's here's I mean it's uh, here it's in Russian here it's in English and there's it's pretty much in parallel and um, I think that's it it is a bridge between the cultures. Mm -hmm. uh, one year ago, it was a completely different situation. It was kind of a complete vacuum of information about people who were there and still not uh, <coughs> agreeing with what is happening on, but now canons in the form of the courts started to speak. And we feel that today it will be uh, as useful as then to have such a phrase book. Uh, the court program. And the pe people actually go to prison for the likes. So, yeah, and we, we, we need to speak about this. And we need to speak about this, not only talk about this, not only in Russian, but also in English. Thank you. Um, let's have another question, and that would be the last one for tonight. Please go ahead. Hi. Um, Hello. So uh, I was wondering, uh, you all obviously have experience and feelings, um, maybe not physical experience, but uh, emotional experience about how the war is affecting you and your friends and your families. And you also have experience um, translating or writing. Um, and so I was just wondering if there might be a piece that you're translating that evokes a different emotion about an event than you feel yourself and um, how you might deal with a translation that you do not agree with emotionally. I was just checking out the window. Yeah, you don't, you don't do it. <laughs> if, if, if you can't... Uh, if, if, if it doesn't speak to you after you tried translating it, it, it won't be any good anyway. Um, the translation, I mean, won't be any good. This working on these things is different from, like, you know, your normal contractual <laughs> paid... Did we mention that this is a volunteer effort? We received no remuneration for this book whatsoever uh not like you know in a and you know poetry is not a profitable business let me just, <laughs> just let me put it out there um but working on this book first of all there was no top-down design we did not decide that we were going to produce a book and we're going to select authors a b and c and we're going to translate them and we were going to try to represent topics a b and c this did not happen we sort of sort of organically bumbled through whatever river of ugh, we were working through and this is what we came up with and we said should we make a book and we made a book but um 
the creative engaging with the material came first, even before we decided to approach any publishers. And maybe that is why nothing in this book has been thrust upon any one of us. We chose what we translated. We, we, we picked things. And then Yulia, um, the editor, went through this quagmire of material that we produced and, and selected and arranged the poems and then and of course there was a back and forth um but yeah so because we were not hired by an entity to translate a body of work i don't think any one of us has come across a text which we looked at and we said oh i'm hating this but i have to do it you know this was this is a different product it's sort yeah, of I, I think the question was a little different or at it? least it, 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 could yeah. be, it could be interpreted okay. a, a little okay. differently right um, the, I, I think there were cases, um, or at least it's theoretically possible, that a, a poem uh, speaks of a feeling that you haven't felt, uh -huh. but you can still relate to. Right. And... Uh, if, if, if that is the question, I, I, I'm pretty sure um, each of us has done something like that. You, you kind of discover for yourself the feelings that other people have felt. Maybe you haven't felt them just because you haven't been in those situations. Or maybe your psychological makeup is different but um, you still can relate to that. And that is incredibly enriching, of course. Um, and this kind of enrichment is one of the goals um, that, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even sure about enriching. I'm, it's some, you know, it, what immediately comes to my mind that this translation by Dilfina that is not translated, it's sitting there in Kabilka. Um, it's uh, called the hatred, and it's I mean, it's it's like it's so hateful, it's it's beautifully done. It's it, in terms of like you know how, how it's constructed from the word, it's a masterpiece, and it's very powerful. So, you like read through half of it, and you can't read anymore because there's so much hate, hate in it, right? And uh, um, that is certainly something I mean, even if though I can relate to the author and kind of. Uh, in terms of you know, yeah, I, I'm still not 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 a person that would have this feeling. I and mean, you ask yourself, I mean, like, okay, fine. And if, if actually it was your house, you know, bombed and your your, your children uh, died and stuff like that, would you feel all this, right? And I I really don't have a question, don't have an answer to this question, but. Uh, uh, this is this is something that I really wanted to translate. And I, I didn't like. I didn't master the strength to do it. <laughs> so I don't know. Thank you, thank you, Andrei, and thanks everyone for the questions and uh, joining us tonight. Let's wrap up with the official part of it and uh, continue with our informal tea time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>